Well, hello, my name is William Baines. Translutaminase does a number of things. Um, it uh, builds the stratum corneum of the skin, a very, very top layer of the skin, a bit right on the outside, it has no cells in it. It's protein and lipid that's cross-linked to form an impermeable barrier between you and the outside world called the stratum corneum, and a lot of that cross-linking is done by a translutaminase. We could ask, are cross-links good or bad? And the answer is yes. They're good and bad. We can demonstrate how important they are by saying, can you do without them? So, some researchers have knocked out one of the translutaminase genes. The translutaminase that makes that stratum corneum on the skin. They've done some genetics on the mouse and they've just taken that gene out so the mouse cannot make translutaminase. And the mice die almost in, as soon as they're born. They have no defence against losing water from their skin. So they just dehydrate. I mean, they dehydrate faster than the jellyfish in the sun. They're, it demonstrates that that stratum corneum, that cross-linking, is absolutely crucial for life. The five layers of the epidermis are, from inside to outside, the stratum basal, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, stratum melissidum, and stratum cornum. This picture explains what's happening. You have healthy cells here on the bottom by the basement membrane. As they start to grow, they're going to be pushed on top. As they get pushed on top, they start to flatten out to become real squamous cell looking. And then as they start to die, the nucleus would disappear. And eventually, all the nuclei would be gone, and all remains is just the keratin layer, which is dead squamous cells. The epithelial cells of the epidermis undergo keratinization. The cells at the basal layer, the layer which is attached to the basement membrane and the connective tissue beneath, are cuboidal and they divide frequently, maybe once a day. Once a cell is pushed up from this basal layer, it only has about two weeks to live. During this time, it synthesizes a great deal of the protein keratin, which is the major protein in skin, hair, and nails. Once the uh, cell begins to push upward through additional layers, uh, the cell gradually dies. The nuclei and other organelles degenerate, and so the cell then becomes a dead bag of the protein keratin. The cells are firmly anchored to each other because of the junctions found between uh, these epithelial cells. These cells will typically stay uh, on the epidermis for an additional two weeks, and uh, therefore the outermost layer of our skin is made of dead interlocked uh, cells. The stratum corneum is the outermost layer of the epidermis, consisting of dead cells. This layer is composed of 15 to 20 layers of flattened cells with no nuclei and cell organelles. Their cytoplasm shows birefringent filamentous scleroprotein keratin. The purpose of the stratum corneum is to form a barrier to protect underlying tissue from infection, dehydration, chemicals and mechanical stress. Stratum corneum is the outermost of the five layers of the epidermis, the top layer of the skin also known as stratum cornum epidermides, horny layer, keratin layer, and corneal layer. The stratum cornum is responsible for providing a protective barrier against environmental damage from sun, penetration, toxins, and microorganisms, and by retaining moisture and lubricants. The stratum cornum is composed of cornicytes, corneodesmosomes, keratinocytes, enzymes, lipids, and natural moisturizing factor, NMF. Mainly, the stratum cornum consists of dead or dying keratin-containing cells. It generally is responsible for the look, feel, and health of the skin. Strength of the stratum cornum comes from 12 to 16 layers of cornicytes, which are brick-shaped cells made of layers of keratin mesh that trap water. Each cornicite is about 1 micron thick which is about 1 25,000 of an inch, about 001 millimeter. During cornification, the process whereby living keratinocytes are transformed into non-living corneocytes, the cell membrane is replaced by a layer of ceramides which become covalently linked to an envelope of structural proteins. 
This complex surrounds cells in the stratum cornum and contributes to the skin's barrier function. The cell wall of the corny site is primarily comprised of the proteins loracrine and involucrine. These proteins interlace, thereby creating strong connections between cells. The connections, called corneodesmosomes, add to the impermeability of the skin. Degradation of the corneodesmosomes leads to exfoliation, or skin sloughing, a process that is not well understood. As the keratinocyte moves upwards from the basement membrane towards the outer surface of the epidermis, we get more and more keratin deposited within the cytoplasm of the and cell. The, we call this process uh, cornification. So we have this differentiation of the uh, keratinocytes, loss of nuclei, organelles in the final stages. The outer surface, just empty dead cells packed with keratin. The stratum corneum is largely waterproof, so that very little water is lost through the skin per day, and serves as a protective barrier, not only from physical abrasion, but also from bacteria which might seek to infect moist living cells, given that it is a coating of dead, dry cells. Not only does our skin protect us against the entry of bad guys, it also protects us against water loss. You know, our skin is waterproof. You might say, what do you mean our skin is waterproof? You know when you stand under a shower, right, and the spray of the shower is going on your body and the water just rolls down your skin? You're waterproof. Now the purpose, the benefit of being waterproof is not to prevent the water from getting in. That's not the benefit. The benefit is to prevent the water that's inside you from getting out. You can lie in the hot sun. Let's say you're lying out in the, on the beach, or you're lying out by a pool on a hot day, and we've had some hot days. You can lie out there for hours. You shouldn't, because of the harmful sunlight. We'll get to that in a moment. But you can lie out there for hours without dehydrating. We're not jellyfish. We're not a snail. You put a snail out in the hot sun, it'll shrivel up and die in a matter of a certain number of minutes. We can lie out in the hot sun for hours because our skin is waterproof and it prevents the water that's inside of us from evaporating and uh, uh, us shriveling 